guys, it's Lizzie. So I'm back at Pepperdine. That's why my zebra print background is like thicker zebra print because my bedspread here is different than back at home. A year ago or two years ago, I kind of forget, someone messaged me on Facebook and they requested that I make a video talking about how Christianity changes the way I live my life. And I thought it was a genius video idea, but I've been putting it off for so long. So I thought that I would finally make this video. Also, I just wanted to say to anyone watching who's not a Christian or practices another religion, that obviously you're gonna find similarities in the way I practice my faith and how you live just because we're all people and I think we intrinsically have a morality inside each of us. Every person can grasp what it means to be fully alive and kind of get wisdom on that even if they don't believe in God. So I just wanted to say that because I don't want anyone to get offended and be like, that's not a Christian thing. I do that too. Like I, of course I know that you do it too. And I made a whole video freshman year of Pepperdine talking about like people who are good without God and how I hate it when people think that like non-Christians can't be moral and can't be inspiring and how they're changing the world. Like, of course you guys can, like I know you can. I just didn't want anyone to misunderstand the purpose of this video. This is just me sharing about my personal experience as a Christian. So the main part of being a Christian is that I have a relationship with an invisible being. Every other relationship in my life, like my friends or family, you know, I see them in person, I talk to them, I hear their voice over the phone, when I'm crying, they hug me. It's physical and it feels real and obviously like you believe that those people are there because you see them, but with God, we can't see him in the way we would see a person. It's really cool that God chose to interact with humanity through Jesus because he came in as a person and through the Bible we get to know God as a person, but since I'm living like 2,000 plus years after Jesus, I don't have that experience. My relationship with God is so central to who I am and just how I live my life and think about my life and make decisions. Since I was late elementary school, I have tried to spend time with God intentionally every day, every night, throughout the day. It's just something that just is so like core to me and my life and what I need. The way I connect with God is through reading my Bible, praying, worship. A lot of these things are not just like what I'm doing by myself. I'm also doing it with other Christians. But just this like constantly getting to know God more and investing in that relationship is just something that is a part of me. Through that relationship, I'm changed and I notice that I'm changed and just looking back like every month, every few weeks, it's like this God is teaching me this God is healing me from this I'm learning this wisdom from this book of the Bible it's just like this constant growth and getting to know God more and I think the coolest part of Christianity for me is that with God it's not like you'll like hit this glass ceiling and like okay you know all about who God is it's like no like God's immense and we'll never understand all of him so you keep getting to know him more and more and more but something about that relationship is it's like kind of my go-to so an example of this is that yesterday I was crying because someone was really angry at me and just when people communicate in a really like angry way it kind of scares me sometimes and so I was crying and I immediately started praying God's always there he's intimately involved with my life emotionally he just knows what's going on and I'm really open with him and that's the reason why I'm so open with my friends and on this YouTube channel because I read through the Psalms and you see people's relationships with God just written there and it's so like raw emotion them just like opening up their hearts to God and telling him everything they're feeling and that's why that's where I learned how to be emotionally open from Christianity because when I pray I'm the same way where I'll just like talk out loud to God for like an hour or like 20 minutes or five minutes and just tell him like everything going on in my life and like everyone I want him to help and heal and be with that's such an emotionally raw relationship in my life and that's taught me how to be emotionally open with other people and with myself. I feel like I'm so in touch with my emotions and it's because I read through the Psalms and then I pray to God and that's how I know who I am. Like God, that relationship with God just helps me know who I am. Also studying the Bible is something that I'm just constantly doing. It's almost like an extracurricular activity or a hobby because it's just like something I'm always doing and I love other books. I love literature and philosophy and fiction. I want to be a writer when I grow up but the Bible is just something that since I was a little girl like I'm always reading it and wanting to know it more and there's so many books and genres in it that it never really loses excitement and when you read a passage intensely for like 10 minutes you'll see all these new facets in it and so it's just kind of like something that I'm kind of obsessed with like I love understanding the Bible more and I'm passionate about that and I took Koine Greek at Pepperdine for three semesters it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because I wanted to know the Greek of the New Testament to understand it better so just like reading through the Bible studying the Bible um, I like annotate my Bible I write journal entries about like what I think it means and I talk to other people about it I look up commentaries it's just like this is something that it's like a lifelong journey of understanding the Bible because that's 
part of my relationship with God that's my spiritual pathway to him, how I connect with him more. So my relationship with God changes me and something that I think that I've learned the most from getting to know God is humanity's relation to God and how we have fallen from his moral code so far. The reason that I need to be a Christian is because I sin. I'm awful. Sometimes I hurt the people who I love the most intentionally. Like I do things that are awful and that are sin and that are wrong and that are hurting the world and other people. And that's why I need a savior. Like I'm bad. I need God. That's kind of this central like reorientation that Christianity has. And it's so against our culture because recognizing how you're wrong and messed up, I mean, that's not fun. Like, it's hard. It's, that's why it's called dying to yourself. Christianity has made me comfortable, though, with realizing, like, wow, these are all my flaws. These are the things I need to change and work on. And that's why I'm so into changing myself, because I know, like, I have a sinful nature, and I need to work on that. And so God helps me so much with that, and I'm always, like, praying about different things that I'm, like, trying to work on. And I feel like through the years, God has legit changed my personality so much. Naturally, Surely, I'm not a patient person. I'm not an empathetic person. I'm not a compassionate person. I don't, I wouldn't care as much about people if God hadn't changed me. And this kind of comes up in my relationships with other people in my life. Um, when I do something wrong, I admit it and I'm comfortable with admitting that and apologizing and wanting to change and accepting when people tell me my flaws because I know I'm fallen. Like I need a savior. So obviously I'm messed up and there's problems with me and how I live. Something else really important as a Christian is having a Christian community and so I'm constantly seeking out to develop like spiritual relationships with other people and um, I feel like if you don't have a faith you don't really experience that. like that's like something different about my life to where I connect with other Christians and we talk about the Bible together we worship together we share about where we are in our walks with Christ we talk about the nature of God we just have like conversations about spirituality in a way where you like relate based upon that. A lot of people misinterpret my videos and try to attack me by saying, you're saying you can't have non-Christian friends and I never ever think that. I just know that for someone to truly understand me, they need to understand my relationship with God and connect with me on a spiritual level. A lot of people who I'm close to do not understand major parts of who I am. No one understands all the parts of me, so it's totally fine that I have non-Christian friends who don't understand me spiritually, because I have some friends who understand me spiritually, but not emotionally, or emotionally and not intellectually. So that's not ever a problem, like that never comes up, but that is something that needs to be in my life. I need community with Christians, and part of that is attending a church, going to a church, and committing to a church. And um, through my church, I have small groups, different worship events I go to. I actually work as a campus ministry intern with my church right now at Pepperdine. Something else really significant that you guys might not notice because it's so internalized, but I feel it, is I just feel peace going through life. And this is a lot of times through my prayer life, like I will be, if I'm heartbroken or hurting from something or one of my friends is hurting it's just like you feel this like desperation where it's awful what's going on and you're out of control but then I pray about it and I take it to God and I stop worrying about it and it's not like I'm trying to stop worrying about it I don't think I could do that but just like opening it my heart up to God in prayer it's like he takes the worry away from me almost and it's just like it's seriously like a miracle every time because it's like how did I go from worrying so much and then the moment I just like pray and surrender it to God he gives me peace and it's just like this feeling that you can't really describe to anyone else unless you've experienced it everything that's going on in the world that's awful like yeah I grieve with people and I hate that there's evil and I'm trying to work against ending oppression but ultimately like this world is not all there is God has a plan he's redeeming it and so I have peace knowing that I have this spiritual relationship with the creator who already has a plan to fix all the awfulness going on in the world. Another thing that I experience is hope to where like I know that this life is short and it's not where I belong, it's not my home, it's not where I want to be all the time. Um, yeah, I, I love my life and I'm so excited about everything in my life. I have so much joy in life and I think God, obviously, like, he wants us to be fully alive on this earth, but at the same time, I want to be in heaven and I have this hope that, like, that's going to be the full new creation and God's gonna just right everything wrong in the world. It's gonna be just, it's gonna be this beautiful, beautiful community of people. I'm not gonna have to be like constantly flying away from like my family and my friends in Thailand and my Pepperdine friends. Like everyone's just gonna be together and it's gonna be amazing and I'm so stoked for that. And so in a lot of ways, like I'm excited to die and to just get out of here so that like heaven can begin. And um, a couple videos ago, I was talking about how I, I was last year going through a desert period of my faith. 
Um, and actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm kind of out of it. I don't even really know what happened, but um, over the past few weeks, it was just kind of like, I was letting myself like feel my emotions again, and it was kind of like, the the feeling in my relationship with God is definitely back now, and it's really, really exciting. But um, a month ago, I was praying, and I was just talking to God, because I've continued talking to Him, even though I don't feel His presence at all. But um, I was just telling Him, you know, if for the rest of my life, you don't let me feel your presence in my relationship with you, I will keep serving you in the same way, and I'll keep loving you in the same way, and it'll be okay because in heaven I'll see you in all your glory and get to worship you and like literally be in your presence in front of your throne. And that's hope. That's saying that if for the next like 60 years of my life I don't have this like feeling in my relationship with God, which I hate not having it, like it'll still be okay because there's heaven and compared to that, this life is short and it's not all there is. And so I think that there's hope in death, there's hope in just really broken, awful situations because this world is ending. Something else about being a Christian is that I don't think of my time as my own, my money isn't my own, my possessions are not my own, my life isn't my own, it's God's. God owns everything and we're a steward of it. So I am just really generous with <laughs> everything. Like I tell my roommates, I live at, I go to a Christian university, so my roommates are all Christian. I, I've told my roommates like, hey, if you ever want to borrow like something in my closet, just like go take it. If you want food, like eat my food. I'm always like inviting people over, like feeding them. Like, I don't know. I just think it's such a beautiful way to live as a Christian where like, you're not like, oh, this is mine. Like, this is my money. It's for me. Like, get away. Like, don't borrow it. Like, I don't know. I'm just really like chill with people like borrowing my stuff because I don't think it's mine. I think I'm just a steward of it and even with money and this gets really controversial and uncomfortable because our culture teaches us that we think of money as something that we earned and we're able to spend it how we want to make us happy but Christianity teaches me that no I'm a steward of this money how can I best use this to help the kingdom. Something that I'm really really convicted about with my money is using my money to help end poverty and oppression going on like modern day slavery. I actually made a video about an organization that ends slavery and oppression around the world IJM my favorite organization and um I guess like the reason I feel so convicted in giving my money away to organizations like that is because of reading the Bible. Like I've been reading the Bible so intensely since I was a little girl and there's so many passages in the Gospels, in the Prophets, in the Old Testament, in the Epistles about helping the poor, about ending oppression and that's just something that's like very central to being a believer of God. In the Bible it, it just basically says like anyone in need and so it's not like we're supposed to pick who we want to help or who we want to minister to. Like if they need help and they're in front of you like go help them. I think so much we like would rather just like pray or like say God will take care of them but like no like God's spirit lives in each of us he works through us and so we need to go out and help people and I don't know like, I think that's like so cool I feel like he could have like redeemed the world in a way that didn't involve us so intensely but he chose to like work through us and to partner with us in redeeming the world and that's beautiful and so don't just like be like, oh, God will take care of it, like, God's in control. Like, no, God gave us free will, and he's working through us with his spirit, and he wants us to redeem the world with him. So I guess just, like, this conviction that I have a mission greater than my life, and I'm I'm a tiny, tiny insignificant part of it. I go to mission trips in Thailand, I'm gonna move there after college, and work with their church, and the first, um, weekend intensive training I went to for this mission trip because they train you so much. It's called Let's Start Talking before you go over so you know what you're doing. But I remember them talking about like spreading the gospel and how we're working for the kingdom and how that's more important than us. And I remember just thinking like getting this feeling in my stomach. Like I don't even know how to explain it. It wasn't nervousness. It wasn't anything I've ever felt. It was just like this feeling of like oh my gosh, like I'm working for something bigger than myself. It's ineffable. I cannot explain what I mean right now. But you're just, it's not you're like a small part in something so much bigger. And evangelism in general is something I'm very passionate about, spreading the gospel. And I think a lot of people have taken verses about that and just seen it as like, I'm trying to make sure people don't go to hell. And that's not at all how I think of it. I think it just comes out of love. Like I keep going back to Thailand because I love the people there. Like. I just love them so much and I want them to experience a relationship with God like I have because it's life-changing, life-giving. Like I want them to feel 
like that peace that's like sealing them and protecting them from like all the awful things in the world and all the things hurting them and making them feel broken like I want them to feel the joy of like worshiping with other Christians and like living community with them like I want them to know God and Jesus describes it as living water because it's it's transformative and this is a really cool metaphor that I've just been thinking like so much last year I thought of like different ways that God created us physically like we need to eat throughout the day we need to be drinking water throughout the day every moment we're like breathing in air and breathing out air and if we didn't like constantly like breathe drink water eat food we'll die and I think that that's intentional I think that God intentionally made it that way as kind of a metaphor to how we spiritually need him and I think a lot of times like you can live not eating a meal the whole day. Sometimes I do that at airports because I hate airport food sometimes and I just like wait to eat until the end of the day and it's it sucks. Like you're so hungry and it's painful. You can do it though and you can still have energy and talk to people and people might not even notice that you're like hungry. And the same with water. Like so many people walk around dehydrated and I've been an athlete for a lot of my life so I'm very aware of like drinking water all throughout the day, staying hydrated, but most people do not get enough water. And I think that it's just a really good metaphor to how we spiritually need God and we need to be like going to God to get poured into through prayer, through scripture, through worship. And I think so many people in the world are walking around spiritually dead and they don't even realize it the same way people who are dehydrated, they don't even realize it. But the moment that they started letting God pour into them throughout the day or the moment that they started drinking enough water, they would be like, whoa, this is what it's like to be spiritually alive. Or like, whoa, this is what it's like to drink enough water. Like it changes you. Also sleep is another really good metaphor. I didn't get enough sleep in high school or freshman year of college. And then once I started getting enough sleep, I, like it felt so different. Like it's a different way to live. You don't feel like this like lag in your brain and this like, fatigue all day. Like it's like, and once I started getting enough sleep and like committing to that last year, I was just like, how could I ever like, how did I live like that? And now I can't pull all nighters anymore because I'm so used to sleep. And I think it's the same way with your relationship with God where you're like, once you have it, you're like, whoa, how did I ever live without it? Connecting with him so much. Another thing is that I, I love people, like all people, I think, God created all of us in his image and I, it makes me so sad when some people just like meet someone and they're like that person is annoying I don't like them and it's like no they're unique and they're beautiful and you don't know them yet but you know if you heard their story you would cry because they everyone struggled with something and they're beautiful and strong and they're unique and bringing something into the world and they have talents and it's just like I love people and I'm passionate about people because everyone I meet is just so cool and that's just kind of a perspective I have to where like my life centers around people so much like I just I love people and that's another way that God has changed me because I used to be super into just like working all the time and spending a lot of time by myself because I love alone time but just like prioritizing people in my life and realizing that they're so valuable and even if it's a stranger or um someone across the world in a statistic who's hurting from a tragedy and you could like send money to them just like loving everyone because we're commanded to love everyone everyone and that's why I like I listen to people I try to get to know people I try to make people feel noticed that's something I'm like really passionate about just like when someone comes into a room and they don't know anyone like go talk to them like I don't know just like loving people it's the way I live and also forgiveness is huge because I mean Jesus forgave me for everything awful I've done and am going to do in the ways I like disobeyed him and so of course I need to forgive other people and I think that forgiveness is really hard when people have hurt you and a lot of times it's unintentional and people don't mean to but sometimes it's intentional sometimes people intentionally hurt you who you trusted and who should be caring about you and treating you differently it makes you angry and you have to just Feel the pain, bring that pain to God, and then let it go and not view them based upon how they treated you. And that's so hard, but it's something that I think becomes more intuitive when you become a Christian. And people who have hurt me, I pray for them, like even if they're not in my life anymore, like you still want the best for them. I guess that's kind of like what forgiveness means. I need to make a whole video on forgiveness because it's really, really difficult and confusing sometimes. So the final thing about being a Christian for me is that I realize I'm a representative of Christ. And because of that, I care about my reputation. And I think you need to be careful to not care too much what people think about you, but you do want people to not be like, oh, she's a Christian and she's doing this. Because some people legitimately like do not seek out Christ because they see how Christians are living and they view us as judgmental and hypocritical. And so obviously like they need to separate God from Christians because I mean, 
we need a savior because we're messed up and we make mistakes. So obviously we're not going to perfectly represent Christ. But I mean, you do kind of have to try and be aware of that. And kind of like everywhere I go, it's like an opportunity to kind of like shine light into people's lives and show them who God is and like how he's changed me and how I'm living because I have this relationship with him. We're advocating for Christ on earth. We're his ambassadors in this world. And so it's just not about me and how I want to make myself look better. It's like, it's more about like wanting to make God look better and wanting to give him more glory than yourself. And it's just like a different way to live. Okay, so that's everything I could think of about like major ways that my life is different because I'm a Christian. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I love you guys so much. I'll see you next Monday. Bye.